are you, uh, your perspective towards the future of uh, the Occupy movements, such as the New Work one, also the other one, and uh, the movement which occurred in London and uh, almost all, all over the world? Yeah. Well, um, what people want to know at the moment is what Occupy is going to do next. I think it's more important to look at what Occupy has done already and what the movement has changed in that um, you look at the elections happening in the US at the moment, Mitt Romney is having to defend himself against you know, this whole thing about him being a banker and him being you know, very, very wealthy and part of the elite. And that wouldn't have been on the, com on the conversation table to such an extent without Occupy. It's really changing the national conversation, certainly in the US, definitely in the UK. Um, but Occupy didn't arise out of nowhere. There were lots of activists putting a lot of work in behind the scenes for years beforehand and afterwards. And there were also, for example, in the, in the UK, um, there were student movements and anti-cuts, anti-austerity groups, very, very active for at least a year beforehand. Um, Occupy didn't has a context, and that context will continue. To be honest, I think that the time of the camps will be, it'll be very, very difficult to bring that back, partly because the reason the camps aren't there anymore, particularly in the US, because they were violently evicted by the police. Um, this is something that people don't really seem to have grasped, that Occupy didn't just go away because people got bored and hippies are lazy. It went away because there was a systematic and brutal police clampdown across the world, particularly in the United States. Over 7,000 people have been arrested in conjunction with the Occupy movement, including many journalists over the past year. And, um, but that kind of repression doesn't break people's spirits. It just makes people change tactics, and that's what you're going to see happening in the next year. Uh, which role do you think can the feminism, feminism movement can hold in, uh, uh, f uh, I mean, in a certain way in uh, trying to break the, um, also the uh, neoliberal system in a certain mm -hmm. way? Can, which role can be played by, uh, by feminism in such a way? Oh, by feminism, it's very, very important to understand that feminism is an economic movement. And that's what a lot of the books and discussions that have come out recently from very liberal, wealthy feminists, mm -hmm. particularly in the US, have seemed to forget that um, feminism, when it started, particularly through the 70s and 80s, there were calls for demands, there were demands for, sorry, wages for housework, free childcare. The idea that women's role in society is an economic one, not just an aesthetic one. The idea, that, and I think women have to get real. Women have to realize that it's not just enough to you know, try very hard to feel good about your body. Do you want to stop? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, what do you think? Uh, um, what do you think uh, of uh, some new evolutions, such as a focus on uh, ethical capitalism, ethical banking, and so on? Do you think that they could work in a certain way as um, as an improvement to this current system? And also, uh, do you think that we have seen an over -consider an, exager an exaggerated consideration of uh, social network as tools for revolution? Mm -hmm. but are they just tool or are Someone said that they are revolution. All right, those are two questions, and they're both very in depth. But um, with the no, no, it's, um, with I'm not an economist, all right, and I see people talking about cooperative banking and moving your money out of big banks. That's important. That's really, really important. And I think people are beginning to understand that it's not enough just to live your own life in an ethical way. You can't just say, oh, well, nothing's going to change. The system's never going to change. Let's me and my friends go and live outside capitalism as best we can. Let's just recycle buy organic cotton and that'll be fine. That, can, that, that sort of thing is important, but it's never going to affect the kind of rapid social change we need. Um, on the, and on the question of social networks, I think it's again important to understand that social networks don't cause social, don't cause civil unrest. Social breakdown causes civil unrest. The only thing social networks do, which is a massive advantage, is allow people to communicate faster, allow people to organise networks more effectively, to bypass existing hierarchical structures. That's all very, very important. But it just means that radical politics is more effective now it doesn't it's not in itself creating the kind of top-down hierarchy top-down movements that we've seen emerging although the fact it just makes them possible thank you very much <laughs> thank you, thank you.